this week's video and today is a little bit different I'm just I just want to talk about something that really matters in our watercolor painting and a lot of times um, when we talk about watercolor we talk about luminosity and luminosity is very prevalent in watercolor paintings when they're done with lots of water and 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 you can see that white of the paper shining through um, transparency <clears throat> is a big key to that but there's also another factor, and it's something that a lot of people don't think about when they're creating paintings. And I know that um, in the past we've talked about the color wheel and, and complementary colors, so colors that, are, that live across from one another on the color wheel. And I'm trying to think here if I have a color wheel in this book, just so I can use it as a reference. Um, let's see. If not, I was just going to talk about it, but I thought if I could show you, that would be even better instead of making one. Um, hmm, maybe not. I have a lot in here, but I don't think I have a color wheel. Yes, I do. Okay. So we're going to look at that really quickly. So this is what we did for the complimentary tertiaries on my Patreon channel. Um, that we did a really thorough lesson on creating tertiaries that um, from complementary colors. But what I want to really talk about are the primaries, so yellow, red, and blue, and these are the split primaries, and what live across from them, which are the complementary colors. So the opposite of yellow on the color wheel is violet, the opposite of red is green, and the opposite of blue is orange. And these are important when we're learning how to mix colors because if we add orange to blue or blue to orange, we can mute it out, okay? And we can get this whole range of beautiful glowing neutrals. So the same with red and green. When we want to mute red, we're going to add green to it and we get an, a beautiful range of neutrals. Same thing with a bright green. If we add just a little bit of red, we'll get a more natural looking green. And then of course the same for yellow and violet. This also holds true for all of the other colors on the color wheel and anywhere in the color spectrum. So, for instance, um, this sort of blue-green opposite on the color wheel is red-orange. Okay, so think about like turquoise and salmon together, how beautiful, all right? And then the opposite of, let's say, yellow-green is going to be magenta. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when I say complementary colors, all right? So let me go back, let's see here, I had a page all ready to go. Sorry, I should have been more prepared that way. But here are the swatches I made. So what I did is I made just little swatches of the primary colors. I have yellow, red, and blue, and then I've got one of each here. And what I want to do is I want to demonstrate what happens when we surround a color with its complement. So with, with its opposite color on the color wheel. So we're going to start up here with yellow. And remember that the opposite of yellow is violet. And I don't have a true violet in here, but I'm going to mix one. So let's see here. Um, I need, hold on. Okay, and let me just wipe off a little space on my palette. I wasn't going to do any mixing, but I forgot. This is like an extended palette that I have of just all sorts of colors, but I forgot that I don't have a violet in here because I usually mix violet. I don't typically buy violet paints. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my with a cool red. So sort of a pinky magenta y red, all right? And I'm gonna add to that a warm blue and that's gonna give me the truest violet. 
truest and cleanest, clearest, and brightest violet, all right? So if I take this violet color and I surround the yellow with it, I'm just gonna paint around this yellow swatch. And we're gonna let that dry. All right, and then next to it, I'm gonna paint another color, like, um, I'll just paint blue around it. How about that? Just blue. Okay, and we'll let those dry. And then I'm gonna come down here to my blue and I'm gonna put orange, which is the complement of blue, on the edge of this one. And sort of surround the blue with orange. And then on the other one, I'll put, let's see, um, I'll put sort of, clear red. And then over here on the red, I'm going to do green. So just a nice vibrant green, which is the opposite of red. And then I'll do, uh, let's see, how about like a golden yellow. Just to surround them. So I'm hoping that this picks up on camera and I, I don't know, you know, I never know what people's screen resolutions are and things like that and how colors show up for you. But when I look at these and I kind of squint my eyes at them and I look at, at the, the yellows here, the one that's surrounded in violet just pops off the page for me. The one that's surrounded in blue, because it's a bright color, it still looks bright. But if I cover this, the yellow is just so brilliant. Okay, it's so brilliant when it's surrounded by violet. The violet makes the yellow sing, okay? It's the same thing with the red. When I surround red with green, the red is really, really deep and rich and vibrant. And with, this one is still bright, but nowhere near as intense as the red surrounded with green. When I look at the blues, it's the same thing. This almost dulls the blue out a little bit, but the orange just brings it to life, okay? So we can also use this theory when we're making um, grays. So if I'm going to make a gray that I want to really make my blue pop, I'm going to make the gray with a lot of orange in it. So I'll start with a regular gray. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of orange to my gray. And then I can surround it with a, with a gray that has more of an orange tint to it, all right? This kind of gray is going to make blue sing the most, all right? So with red, I'm going to use a gray that has a little bit of green in it. Just a little bit. And in the overall picture, you know, when you're, when you're making a painting and you use a color like this, it's going to read as gray, okay? So a greenish gray is really going to make a red pop out. And then the same thing for, violet, for yellow. So I'm going to make a gray with violet in it. and a violet gray is going to make yellow pop out more. All right, so this is all good and, and well when we know we have these simple primary colors and we know what their complements are, okay? But let's say that our colors are a little bit more muted. I'm just gonna flip the page here. So 
So let's say our colors are a little bit more muted and nuanced. So let's see, what's this color? So this is like a dusky eggplant, okay? So what I'm thinking is that the, it's still a violet, even though it's a browned out violet, okay? So maybe I take a yellow, put it over here on my palette, and I add just a touch of this violet to it, just a little touch. And I use that to surround this kind of dusty color. Look what happens. It's just beautiful and vibrant, all right? It really makes that color sort of luminous and it makes it sing. A lot of, a lot of artists say that, it'll make a color sing. Um, let's find another one. So let's try, let's try this color. No idea what this is. All right, so it's sort of a magenta. It's, it's actually sort of a ruby red. So a really bright green is gonna to be too much for this because this is not a really vibrant red. But if I took some bright green and I added a touch of that red to it, it's gonna gray it out just a little bit and I can surround it with that color. That's the perfect complement. Okay, so do you see what I'm doing here? This is a really useful thing. Let's try one more. Let's say we have um, a brown. So brown is really hard to make luminous. It's very muddy, <laughs> okay? But when I look at this brown, it has a very, it has a very sort of um, greenish cast to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a red, which is the opposite of green, add a touch of that brown to it and surround that brown with red, which will make both colors more luminous. All right. So this is something we can experiment with and practice. All right. A lot of times you'll notice in paintings, especially more um, sort of modern um, art that isn't terribly realistic because a lot of times when we're going for realism When we're going for realism, we're going to use the colors that we actually see in the object But when you're looking at, at more abstract or expressionist art, you're gonna get a different um, You're gonna get a different take on color look at artists that are colorists like Winifred Nicholson for instance her work if you look her up she was a masterful colorist and she used complementary colors often in her work to make them sing to make the color sing so let's say um, I'm painting a blue vase and this is just going to be just a really loose thing I mean I'm not doing this for anything but a color study. So I'm, I've got a blue vase, it's really vibrant. And then up here, I'm just gonna put some yellow flashes for flowers. Let's say they're yellow daffodils in this blue vase, okay? And there's some green, a little bit of green here and there. All right, to really make it pop up the page. I am going to let this dry and then I'm going to be back and I'm going to show you how this theory would apply to a simple painting. Okay, so this is dry now. So if I <clears throat> am painting this, all right, and I want my colors to be just absolutely luminous and I need a background for this painting. I'm not gonna just choose any old color. I'm gonna, I mean, I might, but I'm, I'm, if I really want these colors to sing off the page, I'm gonna choose them intentionally. And so maybe for the bottom, I'm gonna use some orange as my base, okay? I'm gonna move my palette this way a little bit. I use some of this bright orange, and maybe I want it a little bit, I don't want the whole painting to be bright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of the blue that I use for the vase, and I'm gonna mute it out a little bit, all right? And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use this color 
as my background down here. And again, I'm just I'm just putting paint on paper. I'm not So I've got some of the blue that I want to sing and I muted it and I I added it into some bright orange. Now, I don't really need the stems of my flowers to be luminous, okay? <laughs> They're already a really pretty green. But maybe I want this up here to be really luminous. So I'm going to use some violet. And I'm going to take some violet and I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow to it. Just to mute it out a little bit. And I'm going to, I'm going to sort of blend those two colors together where they meet and maybe there's a wallpaper pattern or you know uh, other details but I'm gonna make the top part of my painting that surrounds these yellow flowers a violet color that's muted out with a little bit of the same yellow that I use to make the flowers so my whole painting doesn't want to be bright okay I can move this now. Sorry, I just don't have enough room. I need a, I need a higher camera, but it's just not going to happen. So I, this is a color study. So I'm just putting color on the paper to see what happens. Okay, and so now I have these really interesting colors. Okay, really, really interesting colors, and my subject just sings. It lifts right off the paper. Okay. That is how this is useful. Do I always use this? No, I don't. Sometimes I want to be true to what I actually see in front of me. Other times, if by being more expressive and, and more modern in my color, my use of color, I will use these techniques. The important thing is, is to, that we understand it. So when we really want to make a color pop in our painting, that we know how. Okay, so using bright yellow isn't enough. I mean, you know, just putting yellow on the paper and then putting any old color around it isn't enough. We, we have these other tools that we can use, such as the complementary colors, to really make a difference in our work. So it not only makes our subject really stand out, but look at these beautiful, unusual colors that we've mixed. Just by using the color that's in our painting, so we have, you know, bright blue, okay, and then adding a little bit of its complement, so a little bit of orange, and we can get beautiful effects that way. So we can get all of our neutrals that way. I can mix the blue and the orange together and if I wanted to paint a shadow on this, I can use those two colors to give me a shadow that's in harmony with the rest of the painting. All right, that might be a little dark, but you know what I'm saying. So I can use the color that I want that's like the focal point of my subject and mix it with its complement to get backgrounds, to get shadow shapes, to get shadow shades, to actually to actually, if I took more blue and just added a touch of, of the orange to it, so it's still blue, but a little bit muted, if I wanted to put a shadow on my vase, I could use that. And I'm going to have a more natural looking shadow than if I mixed it with a, like a neutral tint or something like that. This is getting really busy. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. It's really important that we understand the complementary colors and that we know how to put them to use in our paintings. So this is a very messy exercise that I did for you, but I hope that it just demonstrates how, how vital it is to understand the complementary colors and how much we can make them work for us in our paintings. So what I would like you to do is to pull out your favorite paints and just try making some color studies like this. Finding a color and then finding its, um, its complement. So it, basically this is a violet, it's a very muted violet, and the, <clears throat> the complement of violet is yellow, and then I add a little bit of the violet to the yellow to get this more, you know, more complementary yellow. 
Okay, so I want you to do that with your paints. See if you can find all sorts of complements to the paints that you already own. And then try making a very, very simple little still life with a, with a, a vase and some bright flowers and choose any colors that you like and then try mixing the background shades and the shadow. And just do it really loose and free like that. It doesn't need to look like anything in particular. This is only to understand color and to find new and unique ways to use them that are harmonious. Okay? I hope this is helpful. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for joining me. And I will be on Patreon tomorrow and Friday with two new videos. If you have not joined us there yet, I hope you will. You can go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description box and you can see what we're up to. Thank you so much. Have a great day.